Now if I say to you the word Cleveland, what's the first thing that comes into your head? Yes, I know the answer, and I'm no mind reader, but it's wedges. And if I'm wrong, there's something up with you, not me. Anyway, today I'm gonna to look for the first time never tested Cleveland irons. And it's an iron with a bit of a difference. Yeah, so really interested to do this review. Uh, one, because I've never really featured any Cleveland product apart from the CBX wedges on the channel so far. And I've been asked for these uh, reviews for quite a while. So it's a launcher UHX iron. And as I understand it, from seven through to the longer irons, and I think it's through to four iron, you've got a hollow body construction. From eight down to gap wedge, it's more of your traditional cavity back so it's a real blend of a set that they've put together here at Cleveland that interests me as to why V sole on the bottom just been talking to the guy from Cleveland about uh, the way in which the laser cut face very much the same as they do with the wedges is going to get some fantastic spin numbers for me uh, without that drop off in distance so we've got that fine balance again of low CG getting the ball up and out there and stopping on greens that's what everybody's after that's what every manufacturer claims but the fact is how does it perform in the hands of the average golfer and we'll find that out very very soon but before we do that let me stick some images up on screen for you now and give you an idea on how these things look because they are different there's no doubt they're uh, they're very much a different iron than what I, I don't think you can compare it to much that's out on the shelf at the moment it's very much got its own identity i'm kind of I, I'm, I'm mixed i would probably say um I think from a shelf appeal point of view, as you know, I like a bit of uh, a bit of shiny chrome. It's kind of it's an it's an okay looking club without being the best looking club that I've seen on the shelf. And when I sit the club behind the ball, it's very interesting. I would say it's I'd liken it to the likes of perhaps um, P790. Um, it's got that in terms of the thickness of the top line. So what's interesting, and I've got seven iron in hand, is that the kind of this, the, the bulk, the mass that you see uh, on the shelf in terms of at the back of the club, once you sit it down at a dress, that is all disappears. So all you see is that top line. But then when you get in the longer irons, and I've got four iron as well, and I may give that a hit a bit later, then you start to see a little bit of that mass at the back and going forward. So they've got very much got a, a, um, a set that progressively gets uh, smaller and more compact down to the gap wedge and then more bulky down it's almost like driving iron look when you get down to four iron so it all makes sense but like i said how does it perform i don't think we need to say any more it's time to hit some golf balls i've obviously i've had a bit of a warm hit this off camera so i've got some uh, immediate thoughts for you um and, and i'll go on and collect some numbers well, it's a decent enough start slightly off the bottom groove so i'll hit a, i'll try to uh, I've hit some better balls off camera before I give you my, uh, my first thoughts on how it sort of sounds and feels. That's again a little bit of map but really good ball flight. Towering ball flight. Point to mention again, lots of videos on this in recent weeks. 30 degrees worth of loft, 7 iron. I think that's becoming pretty much standard in most of these sets now and something that we're only going to see carry on going forward. But again, like I said in the videos that I've put together fairly recently, ball flight defies the loft that's on this club. It's towering up there. It's going r literally um, into the clouds is the only way I could describe it. Descent angle will be good. This club's stopping. I don't know what the spin number is yet, but believe me, at going up at that angle and coming down at that angle, that club's stopping on greens. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to hit some golf balls. I think that what I want... I'd like to know from you is the big thing for me is this and I mentioned it in the intro when we're talking about Cleveland we first of all we associated with irons 100 uh, with wedges rather 100 percent that's the first thing that springs to mind I want to know what you think in terms of the looks the the the, the idea of a, a Cleveland set of irons is that going to draw you into buying these things and the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, and I'll do it at the end and I always don't mention price but I think it's something that we're going to bring into the equation when we look through these numbers at the end Now the plan was, was to go straight into the numbers of the 7 iron, uh, but I broke off and decided to have a little bit of a go with this 4 iron. And um, 
Again, liking it to other clubs, it's very much like the ZU uh, sort of 85 from the Strixon range. And uh, again, have a look at this from the top line, fairly thick uh, top line, and again, plenty of mass behind the ball. It's certainly like I described it, it's more of a driving iron type, and I think if you see that progression in five and four, it's gonna be something that will uh, you'll either like or you won't, and I think for a lot of people, it will give a lot of confidence to. To others, it'll be just a little bit too much mass and bulk. But the reason I've stopped is because hitting some balls with it, it's an absolute beast in terms of what it does. And two things, it carries a heck of a long way. It spins, and I've seen these numbers this time, it spins and the launch angle in terms of where ball flights is incredible for a four iron. So again, loft on this is 20 degrees. Got another thing that will appeal to a lot of people out there in that they've got both the number and the loft stamped on the bottom of these clubs. And uh, I think that's quite uh, refreshing to see. Uh, so 20 degrees, but ball flight's incredible. Um, I'm a little bit blown away by this one because to be honest with you, for me, in my hands, at least uh, this morning, I mean, you can hear the crack out of it. It just absolutely flies off the face. That's just landing now. That's gone a long way. Um, I'm getting more out of this than I was out of the ZU85s and I'm um, a little bit surprised on that one. And again, just talk about the noise on both clubs because they're slightly different, to be honest with you. Although these are both out of the hollow body uh, range of this set, um, this has got a much more, it's a quite a sharp sound. It's not the softest of feeling, but I don't mind the feeling of that either. It's not your typical cast club. So ticking a lot of boxes, but really uh, switch the mind on having it the four iron. Right, okay, so time for a summary and uh, an interesting one for me, I think this. Um, on a number of levels, and like I said, in, um, I mentioned earlier on in the video, I'm not going to mention price because I never do. But in this case, for a different reason, I am going to. And that's because I found out how low these are priced as a set of irons. So I think in general, and like I said, I've had a quick scout around the internet, a six iron set, so six irons, um, is retailing around the sort of £500 mark. Now this is dramatically different than anything we've seen in terms of what's out there, new products right now. So the reason I want to bring in the price is because often products are criticised right now at the moment because of their price hype. Well there's a set of irons that are priced very well, but how did they perform? So let's get into the numbers and see. And first of all I'm going to throw my numbers with the 7 iron. So numbers you're looking at, overall 120 ball speed, 5.8 spin, 169 carry, launching very steep indeed 19.2, up in the clouds at 105 and a steep descent angle. But keep those numbers in front of you for a little while because there's something I want to, those numbers are fantastic across the board. There's two shots in there, dropped off ball speed at 113 and dropped off ball speed at 117 and they impacted on the numbers overall. And I'll come to that why that's quite important to me in the end. But in terms of numbers, seven iron numbers with a, with a loft of 30 degrees, then these are right in line with anything else that I've tested in terms of performance, in terms of all those levels of performance. So spin, carry, launch, descent angle. They do everything I'd want from a 30 degree seven iron. Unreal. Then let's throw the numbers up for the four iron. Now I said things got interesting when I put the four iron in my hands, and they did. And again, 132 ball speed, 43 spin, 198 carry, launching 11.5, peak height of 80 feet, and a descent angle of 40.1. Now again, if you look at ball speed, didn't drop off at all. Spin number was exceptional, I mean unreal. Spin not impacted on carry at 198, and peak height, launch, and land angle, all incredible in terms of performance and like I said that four iron was a real eye-opener and once again performed as good as anything I've tested in pure data led and there's a butt and the butt is going back to the seven iron the two drop-offs and I think I mentioned it when I was hitting the ball at least I think I did that that there wasn't with off-center strikes there was drop-offs that's 
uh, uh, criticism, I didn't get it with the four iron. Again, that bigger mass that I had around the four iron seemed to suggest it was a bit more helpful in terms of forgiveness. I don't know. Or I struck it right in the middle of the club face. But on a seven iron, when I did get a couple off the bottom grooves, then I seen a bit of a drop off. And that'd be, that's a negative, but it's a minor negative. So let's put negatives on the table. I would be a little bit concerned about that drop off. That'd be an issue for me. Then you've got the profile in terms of the top line. Again, that's a personal thing. And the four iron, the longer irons, when you start to see the bulk at the back, that's a real change in sort of the visual that you'd be used to. I'm not saying that it's something that wouldn't suit a lot of players, but for me, I don't know whether it'd be slight. It, it, it's not in the norm for my eye right now. But overcoming those things, then the overall opinion is this. It's an unbelievably good performing set of irons at an unbelievably good price. And like I said, for everybody that's got issues with prices right now, well, there's a set of irons that pack a lot of technology into them, uh, do a great job in terms of performance, and at a price point that is a lot more comfortable, I would imagine, with a lot more average golfers out there. So the summary is a quick one. I ain't going to waffle on for hours because uh, you can see for yourself, numbers are good. I've highlighted what I consider are the potential issues that I might have and others may have, uh, but I think the positives far outweigh the negatives. And a real decent set of irons been brought out here from Cleveland. So like I said, uh, pleased, really pleased to have tested them and to got the numbers that I did because it's a fantastic set of irons at a great price point. That's it. I'm done. End of. As ever, comments down below and uh, I'll see you all soon.